Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Faith and this is Faith Tries Art. On this channel, we we, we try art. <laughs> it's the attempt that matters. Yes. Last week, I posted a short introductory video where I told you guys about my favorite digital art software, which is Clip Studio Paint. I feel like when it comes to digital software, sometimes it becomes a little bit complicated. So in this video, I'll be showing you five Clip Studio Paint workspace tips for beginners. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> okay, right off the bat, when you open Clip Studio Paint, this is what you will see. This is the default mode when it comes to workspace. So I know when you're a beginner, you don't even know how to navigate through this. And probably you just want to start drawing. So that's where our first tip comes in. What you're going to want to do is choose which palettes you're going to use the most. So the first thing we want to do is open all of the palettes that you see. Just click and drag them and then drop them onto your open interface. This is the default mode for Clip Studio. So sometimes it can get a little bit complicated trying to understand everything that is available. So I recommend unpacking everything and making sure that you're putting it on the available space so that you can just see it. I know right now it looks like an absolute mess. It looks like a clutter. But trust me, as a beginner, I wish this was the first step that I took because I didn't know what was available for me. So what you're gonna wanna do is close every single one of these panels. I know, I know. You're gonna ask yourself, why are we closing everything? Bro. Trust the process, trust the process. This is how we come to tip number two, arranging your palette. So what you want to do is navigate to this part that says window. You will see all of the palettes that are available for you, including the ones that were available default. So you will be able to add more than what you had if you need them. And then this is the palette for the tools, such as your brushes, your erasers, etc, etc. So you will just have to resize it and then click and drag it to the side so that you can clip it for your new window. What I like about these palettes is that you can always resize them to your preference. As you keep going, your screen real estate will get smaller. So you only want to have the necessary windows available for you. Next, I'm just going to click the sub tool, which is basically if you're on a specific tool, the sub tool will give you more detail about that tool. As you can see now, I'm on the brushes. So it's going to show me even one of the brushes that I have available. Next, I'm just going to add my tool property. This tool just shows me the properties of the specific tool that I am on. So now you will see the tool properties for the G pen, such as brush size, opacity, and stabilization. I'm just going to resize this so that it fits perfectly to my screen. This is on the left side of my screen. I like to keep every single thing compact to the left as I am left-handed. Next, I'm going to add my layers, which I like to keep on the right hand side. So if you want to add more layers, if you want to add vector lasers, this is where you're going to add your layers. Next, I'd like to add the layer property. So this is basically the properties of that specific layer that you are on. And then next, I like to add the sub view. So the sub view is basically giving you somewhere that you can put images for references, etc. So as you can see, you can just click over each and every single one of these panels and see which one you want to use at a specific time. So that's very convenient. And then next, I want to add my color wheel. The color wheel, I also have, like to have it readily and available for me to choose colors that I prefer to use. 
and then next I'm gonna just click the color sets so the color sets are presets of colors that you can customize that you can make for yourself just have it readily available for like let's say you're creating specific character that you like to use specific colors with it's very useful when it comes to such things and then this is basically my workspace this is what I like to use. This is how I like to customize my clip studio paint to make it more efficient for me, especially. So if you want to add more windows, you are more than welcome to do so. But I think if you're just going to work on illustrations, this is more than okay. So the next step that I have is to register your workspace that you have created. Okay, to register your workspace, you're just going to click workspace and click register workspace. You can name it anything you want for now i'm just gonna name it face workspace and then i'm just gonna click ok when i'm done so then when you want to use the workspace you can just navigate again to your windows and then select the default I'm just gonna show you how it's going to look it's gonna go back to the default workspace just in case you just don't like the way that the one you created looks and you want to start again it's always available for you so you're just gonna go again to your window and then click your workspace and then you're gonna navigate to the one that you created and say reload and there you have it your workspace has now been saved and you can use it as you see fit also an option for you to register your workspace as a material so if you want to save it for future use or just put it on the accessible for other people which is what i think i will do maybe <laughs> if that's what people want i will put it on the asset store so that people can be able to use it and then you're just gonna put it in your materials file anywhere that you think it's necessary add a tag for it i'm just gonna name it my workspace or maybe um fates workspace and then I'm just gonna click OK when I'm done. So you're just gonna navigate to your materials bar and then you can add it from, it's gonna be underneath wherever you saved it. So there it is for you to, uh, for you to use. So you can just click on it and then you can just drag it on and then just drop it and then it'll be able for you to use it just press ok and then the system will reset itself and then you'll be able to use your workspace tip number four is something that i wish i knew most as a beginner i advise you to customize your command bar the command bar is the top space that you see here so it this is the default command bar it comes with stupid studio paint but i assure you some of these things i do not use personally so you can customize it according to what you may need so to customize it just go to the clip studio command and then click command bar so here you will see the commands menu commands the tools that are available for you and all you have to do is click on the command bar to delete something that you know that you're not going to use so i'm just going to click on these tools that i don't regularly use they are important i just don't use them personally and then i'm just going to go through the menu commands to see which one of the tools that i need so you can always customize your command bar to fit your necessary uh, needs so you don't have to worry about things that have been deleted because they will always be under the tool menu for you to add them again so i'm just going to show you how to add a tool like i just did i just added these scissors which is the cut option but you can delete it again just to give yourself some space you can move it so you have a lot of leeway when it comes to your command bar and how to regulate it and set it up so i feel like having this available is very necessary especially when you want quick access to your tools and last but certainly not the least get workspace templates at the clip studio asset store one of the things that i love most about clip studio paint is the asset store the asset store is essentially a treasure trove god's gift to artists kind when it comes to getting materials so to look for a workspace, all you have to do is go to the search bar and type workspace. Uh, 
once you're done just click go to click ok and there you have it you will see all of the workspaces that have been posted by users of clip studio paint so you can choose anyone that is going to be compatible with your device and the version of clip studio paint that you have So for this video, I went ahead and downloaded a workspace so that you can see how it's done. It's just going to say re-download, which I don't have to do. And then I'm just going to go to my materials bar and I'm going to open underneath my downloads. That's where it will appear. So all you have to do is just click on it. And then you can just drag it onto your canvas and then it will open. You can go about and customize the windows that you see available so that it can be a little bit more user friendly. And that's it. Again, here are the tips for you. First thing you're going to want to do is choose which palette you're going to use the most. The second is arrange the palettes according to your preferences. Next, you're going to want to register and save your workspace. And then next, customize your command bar. And then don't forget to visit the Clip Studio Asset Store. Once you've done all of that, you can finally start drawing. Okay. Drawing on Clip Studio Paint can be a little bit overwhelming at first but as you get used to the software it becomes the best software you've ever used for digital art because it has so many available features for you to use so at the end of the day it's just about giving it a chance and getting used to the software i've decided to add a time lapse video so you can see the results of my drawing but i hope at the end of this video you are able to create your own workspace and you're confident enough to create your own illustrations please come and follow me on my socials this is my twitter and instagram handles so you're more than welcome to come and follow me please don't forget to subscribe to my video and thank you again for watching i'll see you in the next one bye